Mr Javid, you came in uh, fast ballot, fifth place. Are you going to stay in the race or do you think it's time to fold the cards? Oh, I'm absolutely staying in. I'm, I'm pleased with the result because it means I'm through to the next round and I've got the days and the weeks ahead to continue making my case. Some of your colleagues suggested to me that given that you're Home Secretary, they would have expected you to have a better showing in the first round. What would you say to that? Well, look, it, it, it is crowded and uh, I think it's probably fair to say there's got more contestants in this leadership election than we've ever yeah. seen before. It does mean votes are going to get split. I mean, clearly Boris Johnson has done well in the first round and uh, I think he's you know, almost certain or nailed on to be in the final two. So this is now a, a, a battle for who gets to uh, be with Boris in that final two. You described Boris Johnson as yesterday's man. Was that a mistake, given that it looks like he's actually going to be tomorrow's Prime Minister? <laughs> It's not a mistake. You're just trying to set up a, a choice. You know, we've got an opportunity here as a party to try and reach out to more voters. Because if we look at the history of the Conservative Party, in the last quarter of a century, we've only won one election, and that was only just in 2015. That's the only majority we have achieved. And we only get that by having broad appeal across the country to all parts of society. You met with Matt Hancock, the Health Secretary, last night or yesterday to discuss uh, what you should do. Did you decide with him that one of you would pull out and he'd maybe support you? No, I'm not going to get into any discussions I've had with any other candidates, so it wouldn't be right. But it shouldn't surprise anyone that once you've had the results of the first ballot, that a lot of the candidates and the supporters will talk. You know, the history of these contests are they are quite fluid and things do shift, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. Going on to Brexit then, let's just, let's just quickly go your Brexit policy. I understand what you're saying about you think you need to directly negotiate with the Irish government in order to try and resolve yeah. the backstop, which is the bed blocker on getting some sort of agreement through. But you've also said that we must leave on October the 31st. What, right. it, what happens if Parliament tries to block that, which could happen? No, of, of course. Look, I'm acutely aware Parliament could try that. And I've also said I don't want to see a general election until we've delivered Brexit. So that means I accept it's this Parliament. Yeah. And I've seen what's been happening. We've all seen yeah. that. And I, I think the way through that is to come back with a deal that yeah. Parliament can accept. And that's exactly why I've said that what I would focus on is the only deal that's got through Parliament, and that is the withdrawal agreement with changes to the backstop. It has to be October 31st, because I think part of the problem we've had in, uh, in, in recent times is that there's been no sort of what I'd call like a proper deadline. You know, if, you, if, you're, uh, if our EU friends know that we'll, you know, the deadline can always keep changing, keep changing, it doesn't really focus the minds there and here. So I think you have to have a so, deadline and you have to focus on it. In terms of a no-deal Brexit or absolutely exiting October 31st, you are historically a businessman, a deal maker. Mm -hmm. You understand finance better than most people in that cabinet. You also understand the economic risk, don't mm. you? of a no-deal Brexit uh, that business might not be ready for or want on October the 31st. Are you prepared to have that put onto the British people? The British people have voted to leave, that we have to deliver that result without having a but second you, referendum, without continuing to delay. I understand that, but you're, bo you're allowing Nigel Farage to box the Conservative Party into making it have to be on October the 31st because he said anything else is a Brexit betrayal. You're prepared to do that, despite what you know could be the economic fallout for British citizens. Well, this is not about Nigel Farage uh, at all. This is about a commitment that we as Conservatives made at the last general election in 2017 where we said we would take the UK deal or no deal out of the EU yeah. by, in that case, by March. I don't mm. want no deal. But if you want to be Prime Minister of this country, you have to be responsible and you have to prepare and because I, it could happen. And so I put to you, you want to be Prime Minister, and I'm going to read to you some of the stuff from a Mark Sedwell, the most senior manager in, in government, a, a, a leaked paper again but on a no-deal Brexit warning. Food prices up 10%, police unable to protect the public, direct rule in Ulster, the worst recession since 2008. Another study commissioned by the government about what happens if you have two-minute delays in Dover, 17-mile tailbacks and the M20 in gridlock. I mean, do you want to be the Prime Minister that puts that on the British people? I've always accepted there will be challenges to no deal, but I also do think that we can prepare much more. The Donald Trump visit and that state dinner. 
uh, which you didn't attend. Do you think it was a mistake or do you think it was a conscious decision? No, I'm not going to speculate. Honestly, I don't know. I, I, I don't know the reason. Uh, I did, you know, when uh, I learned that I wasn't going, my office did inquire about it and they did ask and they were told that I wasn't invited. And, uh, and I left it there. What do you think? Do you think the Queen doesn't like you or Theresa no, May doesn't like you? I don't think it's like got you? anything to do with the palace at all. These lists are put together by, the, of course, they call state dinners, but you know, it's, uh, it's the government that decides, especially when it comes to the government ministers, who goes as the government only. That oh, right, because Number 10 said yesterday that it was the Queen that takes the decisions. No, it's a, it's a government decision. It's clearly someone inside Number 10 who decided the Home Secretary should not come. I don't know who that someone is, and I don't know why they made that decision.